Good morning, everybody. Um, this is Jeanette, and welcome to our um, project management uh, session on document control. This is our second session in a series of three uh, talking about the project management application. Um, you should have all received um, documents with your meeting invite. There was a um, PowerPoint, PowerPoint file as well as a Word document. So hopefully you have at least have the Word document printed out so you can follow along as we go through the different documents um, and take. It's a good place for you to take notes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and and get started here. We're going to go through a, a short PowerPoint refresher, um, just so that for those of you that didn't uh, attend the first session, you <clears throat> have some uh, review of the project management features and some of the terminology. Uh, the document types, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what those are, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we'll jump into the software and take a look at running those um, different documents. Right, so as far as the features are concerned, uh, this what we're focusing on today is the creation and the tracking of the different documents that come with the software, uh, meaning the submittals, the transmittals, the RFIs. Uh, we'll be doing change orders in our next session, in session three. Uh, we're also going to take a look at meeting minutes. We'll create um, a, a meeting, and then I'll we'll talk about what that form looks like how you can track the information on that um, meeting document. Uh, we're going to talk about printing of, of the documents or emailing. We'll take a look at entering drawings into the system. Uh, you'll you'll ha actually have access to those drawings and attachments if you choose to put those in, in, in most of the documents that we're going to look at. I'm going to hopefully successfully demonstrate the correspondence log. I'm going to actually uh, pull an email <clears throat> off of my machine into uh, the correspondence log for one of the jobs. We'll talk a little bit about custom logs, um, though I think with the, uh, with the addition of field reports, uh, those you, know, you may or may not uh, even need the use uh, of that. We'll take a look at, at a few of the field reports that come with the software. And then again, in our third session, we're going to be looking at um, setting up uh, change orders for either a contract or a subcontract, uh, using change requests if needed, having those flow through to a change order, and then releasing them to accounting so that um, the other applications actually see those changes. Um, we're going to also kind of talk about reports that are available in project management. You have access to all of the information in job costs through PJ. Um, so you can look at, at this information, depending on what it is, from either project management or job cost. In addition, uh, we already talked about setting up jobs in our first session, that you have the option to set jobs up first in PJ and then release them to job cost or create them in job cost, and the system will automatically create them in, in uh, project management. Now, this is, uh, these are some of the documents that we're going to be talking about today, terminology-wise. Um, the transmittal, the submittal, the RFI, and meeting minutes. Um, so we will be, like I said, we'll, we'll be going through all of these different areas uh, once we get into the software. So let's go ahead and jump in there now. Okay. Now before we start going through the first document, which is the transmittal, I wanted to also remind everybody uh, that one of the things that you should have done or should do before you start is go into Send Settings and make sure that you're set up as a default sender. So you will actually create your company, and then yourself as a person with that company, um, and then you should be able to find you when you use the binoculars and pull yourself in. So that any emails that you send um, out of project management, the recipient will know 
who the, the email is coming from. Otherwise, it won't show, and they may delete those emails without without opening them up. Okay, so send up, set up yourself as a default sender. And then the other thing I wanted to remind you um, all about is under Company Settings, PJ Settings, the document forms are listed here. So these are all crystal reports. They, they come with the Sage software. You have access to them with crystal. So if you want to modify them, uh, add logos, move, move things around, you can, or create a whole brand new form. Just be sure that you come in here on this tab and lock that design in uh, where, wherever it's needed. Okay. All right, the first document that we're going to take a look at is the transmittal. This is typically viewed as a cover sheet um, that is attached with another document that's, that's being sent um, out to a, either a project manager or an owner or a vendor, to, you know, depending on what it is. It can also be used to send other documents out. Uh, we have an area down here where you can attach documents, and then you can email this from inside Sage. So uh, don't think of it as just a cover sheet. It can be used for other things to, to track other items that you're sending out. Uh, it also you know, creates a very professional looking document um, that is attached with whatever those files are that you're sending. So let's talk about what's on this screen. Um, starting at the top, you'll put in your job number. Now, I've set my system up to pre-fill the job number for me, so I'm not, if I'm working on a bunch of things, bunch of documents for the same job, it'll pre-fill. Otherwise, I can use the binoculars or the drop-down list to, to select the job that I want this transmittal to be um, created for. It's actually keeping track of the number over here on the the right-hand side, so this is the 11th transmittal I've created for this job, uh, and then it pre-fills with the system date. In the to area, I have a couple of choices here. I can click the drop-down, and it will pull up a company list for me from address book, or I can use the binoculars, and from here I can select what it what group of people or person I want to send this document to. Now, using the drop-down up at the top, we have a couple of, of lists that are attached to the job itself. So if I want to pull in individuals that I have set up on that job on the contact list, the, these are all the people that I've attached to that job. If I've created a distribution list for that job, this will show me the different distribution lists that I've created that are attached to this job number, and I can pull in that group of people. Okay. Or I can go right into address book and get the company and the person view. Um, and it actually shows me if I, um, yeah. okay, yeah, as soon as you click on, it will actually uh, pull in those individuals, and then you select them over to the other side. So I'm going to pick a distribution list, and I'm going to say that I want to send um, this to my engineers. So I'm going to select that as my contact list, and when I click OK, it brings in the individuals that are on that distribution list. If I want to CC individuals, I can CC maybe everybody that's on my job contact list. Um, I can pull down my shift key and grab groups of people or just pick individuals, select, and then OK, and that brings them back in. Okay. I can give it a subject line. And then if I'm going to attach something to this, um, this transmittal, I've got some options here. Now, these are, you, you cannot modify these. So I'm, I'm sorry we can't add or remove any of these checkboxes or descriptions. Uh, but you can use the other if you have something here that you want to, um, to describe. And then down in the grid, is this is where you will 
pull in the extra things that you want to send. Now you can use the binocular and you can select off the list what it is that you that you need to um, to attach. Um, it could be you know, another form um, and just by selecting the form you click OK and it will give you another window where you can go out and find the different form that you that you need to select or if it's maybe a it, right now it's set to an attachment so here you can find just use your browse um, options here and find the uh, the attachment that you want to to pull in uh, you can specify number of copies the date put today in there uh, a description a number, if maybe this is a drawing number or or some other type of number that that is important. Uh, description, okay. And then here's your attach button again, um, so you can find again other other documents or attachments or notes that you want to put in uh, with this transmittal. Now down below. Um, Again, some more checkboxes, and again, I'm sorry, you can't change uh, the descriptions or add any more types of checkboxes uh, to this area. Down below, you can put in some uh, remarks. Okay. Down below also, it, it pulls in our from, and it's pulling me in because I am the, de I am the, uh, the default sender. Right. Once you have everything filled in, just click the Save button. Now, I don't know those of you that are using PJ have probably figured this out. On a lot of these windows, before you can do any other steps, you need to click Save. If you don't, um, it'll prompt you to. So I'm going to go ahead and save uh, the, this, and then I'm going to show you what the form looks like. We'll just do a print preview. <clears throat> Almost looks like. Come on. Here we here we go. It's a crystal. It's taking a minute to come up. <clears throat> it almost looks like the the form, the screen form that we that we filled out. Maybe. All right. So this is the default. And again, you can come in, change some some of the text. Uh, move some things around within Crystal. Uh, pull in your company logo here um, if if you'd like to. Okay. If you decide to email this, you have your send button here. Now it's going to pull in yourself as the default sender and the date, and then it's pulled in all the people that you have set up within the transmittal. So all the two people and all the CC people. It's pulled the transmittal in as a PDF uh, attachment. It does have a subject, and it's a generic dis subject, so you will have to retype the subject, and then you'll have to enter your message down below. Now, this is going to send the message out through Outlook. However, at this point, it's not attached to it yet. So it can't pull in any signature lines that you may have set up within Outlook. You're going to have to go ahead and put your name in. Okay. And then once you click Send, it will, it will send the, um, the email out for you. Okay. All right, so that is a transmittal, and I have the sample of what, that, what the default looks like on page two. All right, the next document we're going to look at are submittals. So for those of you that are doing any type of construction where you have to get approvals on different types of materials, uh, the submittal is what you're going to use to track the sending and receiving of those samples between yourself and the vendor and yourself and the owner of the project. So it will again. I've I've have it pulling up the uh, the job number that I've been working on. Um, you can, if you have spec session, 
sections set up on the um, on the job. You can pull in what what this um, pertains to. So we'll just stick it under here. Um, it's number one. Give it a description. Right now. What this is going to create is a form that you can send with the sample. So it's not, you're not really putting in what the sample is. Maybe under remarks you, you can, but what you are putting here in the grid is, is the fact that you're sending the sample out. Now this revision number, the original sample that you're sending will be a zero. It's the original Sample. Once we get the information back, we can receive, the, receive it back, we can change the status. If we have to send it out again, maybe it was rejected, we'll add another line to this grid and that will be revision one. So let's pretend that we sent something out on the first and the status is uh, blank. We, we don't have, the, have a status yet. And we forwarded uh, it out that same day, and we'll just say this is paint, paint sample, okay? And we received it from, we need to pull our vendor in here. Um, we'll just pull Beaverton Painting in here, and then we sent this to, we can pick someone off of our job, and maybe we'll go to the, we don't have access to the distribution list here, but let's let's say we'll go ahead and leave it at Jack here. And then we want Jack to return it to us. And we'll forward it back to Beaverton Painting. And we'll say this is required back today. And we'll put the today in all of these. Okay, so this is important. We need this information. And down here where it says general information, this is just um, for reporting purposes. Okay. And it's actually pulled in copies to send and copies to forward. It's pulled that off of the job itself here in project management. All right, so I'm gonna save this and I'm going to go ahead and print and I'll show you the, uh, what this looks like. And there's a sample on page part. Um, I couldn't get the whole screenshot, but on page five, right? So this is just a form for them to initial and send back with the sample. So, uh, you know, and say, do you approve it or not approve it? So then when this comes back, we'll close out of here. And we'll go ahead and close. Okay, so it's been a few days. So we're going to come back to that submittal and maybe was that team? Yep. Let's find it. No. We need this. I use the find button. So we've received it back. We need to uh, modify this submittal number one here. And so we're going to put in, we're going to click the button that says new revision. So this is revision number one. And we received it back on 9-11. And we returned it the same date. And the status, we didn't like the color, so we rejected it. And actually, we're going to say revise and resubmit. We want to send a different color okay. on this date. And we're going to say uh, wrong tint of gray. Okay. All right. So then we, you know, we've got this now recorded in project management so that we can see the samples going out, coming back in if we have to resend another one. So we would actually go ahead and 
return this with to the vendor with maybe with our form and then when we get another sample back that will be revision two we'll click new revision again that'll give us a second line and then we'll send that back out All right, so we keep we keep going back and forth until we get an approve approval on whatever that sample is so it's we're tr what we're trying to do here is we're documenting all of the of the samples and decisions that have been made about those samples within project management. So let me save this, close it. Now I've got a, a, a screenshot on page four in your handout about um, an in, showing an inquiry. And if you go under inquiries and go down to submittal, you have a submittal log, and we can take a look at our class submittal here, it's right here on the top. And if we double click on that, it shows us the same information that we saw on the form, just in, just in a drill down inquiry um, instead. Right. So this is a good way, like I said before, it's a good way for you to track your samples um, that, are, that are going out for approval. All right, the next form we're gonna take a look at are RFIs. Request for information. Questions about the project. Okay. So this is a document that you're going to send out um, maybe to a project manager. Maybe the owner of the project has asked you a question. And so you want to send that question back out. Uh, again, the job, if, it's, if it pre-fills uh, with the current job you've been working on, that's great. Otherwise, use your, your drop-down or your find button to get the correct job number. Um, it's going to show you how many RFIs have been, already been uh, generated for this project. This will be the eighth one. Uh, Pre-fills with the date. Uh, this is our main uh, contact, so that's who we're going to, we're going to ask the question to. Uh, we can use the binoculars in the CC area, and we can send to uh, our contact list. Maybe we want to pick off the distribution. Maybe we want to pull all of the engineers in again. So we'll select that as our CC list, and that pulls everybody in. Um, just use your, your arrows. Um, if you only see one or two people on the list and you're worried that not everybody came in, on all of these windows, you can use the, the arrows to, to move up and down. All right, in the subject line, we'll just say this is a question for class. We can pull in a drawing number if this question pertains to a specific drawing, and if we have that set up on the job, uh, we're gonna go to that in a, in a minute, but I can show you here, we've got two, two drawings already, already locked in here, so I'll just pull one of those in. Um, and then if it's, if it's about a specific uh, spec section, we can lock that in too. Okay. And then we can put in what the question is. Um, And then as the default sender, uh, I'm pre-filled as the submitted by. Received from, uh, if someone else has asked the question, you can put them, them in. Um, if the question may impact um, the, the scheduled amount of time this project is going to take or the cost for this project, when you get the answer back, you can mark those, those fields again, for reporting. The answer, when the answer comes back, um, you'll have to type it in. So this form that goes out to the person that needs to answer the question is not an interactive uh, PDF type of a form that, that will come back in an update stage. So if they send the answer back in a Word doc, you can cut and paste parts of the answer in here and then it maybe attach the document uh, to this RFI, or if it comes back in an email, uh, just cut and paste the answer back in here. And then who, who answered it, and then if you had to forward that answer um, on to someone else. So let's save this, and let's go ahead and print and see what the sample looks like. So the sample 
is on page 7 in your handout. Okay. All right, so yeah, hopefully, you know, if they do respond back and they send you the form and they have actually filled something in or handwritten something in, you're going to have to type it. Um, hopefully it will be in some kind of a document that you can cut and paste. Um, you'll come back in to the RFI and you'll, um, you'll cut and paste the answer back in here. Now again, if you send, all of these send buttons look the same. It's got yourself as the default sender. It's got all the people that you've listed in the two and the CC boxes. Um, it's got your RFI as a, uh, as a PDF. It has pulled in, the, in the subject area here, it's pulled it in here. So you see that it's, it, it, it's done that for you so you don't have to override it. Um, but then you will have to put in your message and your name. And, and also, um, with, with all of these documents that we're looking at, I just showed you the one inquiry for the submittals, but there are, you know, there's a RFI, RFI log, there, the submittal, the transmittal ha also has a, uh, as a log, meeting minutes that we're going to look at next also has um, a log. So all of these documents you can look at with inquiry. Um, or you can even reprint um, the form. Okay, so our next um, document is the meeting minutes. And this is kind of a nice thing to use, um, even if you're just using it internally um, to, to bring in agendas for the meetings. Uh, so when you first come in, it's going to default to create a new meeting. Uh, it'll pull in your job number, and then this drop-down under type, you can actually add more to this um, uh, with custom descriptions if you need to. Otherwise, these are, are the defaults that come with Sage. So you um, pick your type, click OK, and that brings us into the form uh, setup. So again, the job number is filled in. Uh, it's got the type filled in from the previous window. It's numbering our meetings for us. We can put in our meeting date, a description. All right. Now it's pulled the, the uh, location from the job. So if that's not where you're going to have the meeting, you need to go ahead and change that. Give it a start time. And this is military time. Let's see. I think I need to do 09 like that. Oops. Yep. And then an end time. And then if we're going to meet again about this, put the next date in and put a, and a start time. Again, military, military time. And then because I'm the default sender again, it's pulled me in as the who prepared it. I can look, lock in attendees. I can use the, again, the list button. Let's grab some people here. Let's get a person view. And let's grab John and maybe Alan. Okay. And then here's where I can, I can track. When I come back and update these meeting minutes, I can mark that they, they actually attended. If I need to carbon copy anybody, whoops, no, I didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean John twice. Let's grab, eh, come on, let's grab Jeff. There we go. Um, okay, so again, carbon copy, use your binoculars or your drop down. And then down below, start listing what the subjects are. And then also, who's responsible? Um, and let me grab myself here. Okay. 
fine. I need to be an attendee. Do today, and then I can add more here. Let's say it's reports. And it's also due today. Now, at the same time that I'm adding these items up here, it's numbering them with the meeting number and then the item number. So Again, if you look up at the top under number here, this is meeting number one for this type of field. At the same time that I'm adding it here, it's also adding a detail window for each of those items down here. So I can add the items up here or I can add them down here with a new item button. I can even go backwards with the arrow here and see the items I've already added. And if I want to add some descriptive information here, I can. Now what this is nice for is, is after the meeting, you can come back into this meeting and update it and put you know, whatever decisions were made. Um, if one of these items did not get completed, it can be moved over to the next meeting as old issues or outstanding, outstanding items um, so that you keep track of all the different things that you're that you're wanting to get done with whatever this meeting um, is supposed to be about. So let me show you here. Let me save this, and I'm going to go ahead and print again and do a preview so you can see what the meeting looks like. The meeting minutes. So here it's got the two items that I created set up as new business. And again, if, I, if we don't complete everything, um, I can have whatever's left over moved to the second meeting and it will show up as old business. So it'll, I'll, I'll see two parts. Okay. So let me kind of demonstrate that for you. So let's say, Say that we everybody attended. We finished item number one. Let me save that and we'll close. And then we're going to come back into meeting minutes and we're going to create a new meeting based on a previous meeting. So it's highlighted here. Right. And when I come into it, it's now meeting number two. The reports is still there. See, it, it carried it over because we didn't finish it. Now when I add another line, it's meeting number two, item number one. And this may be change orders. And let me put myself on there again. Be on 9:25. Okay, so let's save that and print print preview. <clears throat> so now, as you can see, it's still listed the reports area under old business, but it's pulled in. The second item, the, the item for the second meeting, as under under new business. So this again, this is a nice way to keep track of maybe meetings that you're having about these projects, even just within your own company, or your recording and tracking meetings that you're having with um, owners or even vendors. Okay. So it's it's good documentation. Okay. All right, so we've covered transmittals, we've covered meeting minutes, RFIs, submittals. Let's take a look at the correspondence log. So this is where you can pull in um, attachments. These can be Excel 
spreadsheets, they can be Word documents, that you want to have all of this um, in one place that you can scroll through. Additionally, we can pull emails in. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you. So I'm going to go out to my um, Outlook, and I've got an email open right now where I've created a, an email to myself uh, for the correspondence log. Now, you can pull in to the correspondence log any email that you've received, you have to open it up, or any emails that you have sent. Again, you have to go out to your send items and you have to open up the email. Okay. Once you have the email open, uh, depending on your version of Outlook, you need to go to the area where you have your add-ons. And you should see an add to log option there. And this, is, this was actually created when you installed project management. When you click on that, it's going to bring up the correspondence log entry form. This is pulling right out of Sage. It's pulled in again. This is the job that I've been working on. I can put comments in here. I'll just say second email from project. Okay. Status for reporting purposes. If this is something that um, uh, again, you want to be able to, to either look at a log or look at an inquiry or a report and know maybe there's, there's something that needs to be done about this email. Um, so we can condition those, those uh, types of things to show you things that are urgent. And so maybe this is high urgency, we need to do something, um, and it needs to be done by tomorrow. Um, it could be, you know, a spec section um, might be needed to be pulled in um, under the type. Uh, maybe this is a request, you know, just depends on, maybe it's a notice, and then it was sent to us via email. Okay. Now, you can pull other things into the correspondence log. They can be faxes, phones, any, any of this. And again, these are, these options are, um, in custom description, so we can add more to this list if you need to. So I'm going to say OK to that, and then you should get this message about this being a, a, a correspondence log entry. So I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll close the and then you should, once you close, you should, that message should flash to you that a message has been sent. And this should be actually, let me close and open it back up. I think it needs to refresh itself. Yep, there it is. Okay, so second email from project. Okay. All right. Now, the entries that you create uh, in the other forms that you email out, those are not automatically recorded in the correspondence log. Those emails will show up in your sent box. And what you need to do is open up that sent email and then link it to this correspondence log in order to be able to see on, the lo on this log that you've sent out meeting minutes or an RFI or uh, any, anything else, uh, any other form that you've emailed out. And then again, like I said, we can, we can uh, run reports. We can even maybe search. I'm not sure. We can't do a filter right here, but we can use conditions um, on some of the inquiries and, and other, other report forms, excuse me, reports. All right, there's a sample in your um, handout on page 10 and 11. Okay. And actually, let me go back to the cor correspondence log because I didn't demonstrate that. I can actually open the email from there. Okay, so 
So let me close that and I'll do it again. So from, oops, from right here, all I did was click on this symbol right here on the far left. And when I clicked on it, it opened the email back up. So if you need to reread re those emails, you don't have to search through Outlook to find them. If they're in your correspondence log, <clears throat> you can open them from there. All right, the drawing log. It's on page 12. So all you're doing here um, is recording the, the drawings themselves. Um, under the discipline, again, we can add more to this in custom descriptions. Um, or you can say all disciplines, and it shows all of, of your drawings. Let's see if I can open this up a little higher. Yep. Okay, so you can uh, record the original. Then if you need to revise, do any revisions, you can, re you can record that. So let's put the new date in here. And then I, you just put a revision in there like that. Okay, so you, you see the, um, the, new rev the new revision line. And you can even, with this attach button here, over here, this paper clip, if you want to attach the physical or, or electronic copy, excuse me, of the drawing to this drawing log, then when you're doing your forms within project management where it's asking you for attachments, you can attach the drawing itself to the transmittal um, or the RFI, whatever, wherever you need to attach that. Now you can also add more columns here. You've got the, um, the, di the discipline, the number, the title, dates, and uh, comments. If you right click up here in the heading and you go to hide show columns, there's more uh, values here that you can add to this grid. The default is what you see here, these first seven columns, the history, the, 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 the title, and the date, and so on. If you need to add more, you've, you've, we've even got approved and approved date. We can add that. They show up here on the end. Okay. All right. So um, building this uh, drawing log can, like I said, it can be used uh, with the other documents. Um, so that you can send, you know, copies of these drawings out um, as needed. Let's save that. Close. All right, the last thing that we're going to look at here today are field reports. And again, under company settings, PJ settings, there is a tab for field reports. And it's marked as, by default, all the different field reports are available to you by default. If you're not using some of these, uncheck them so that they don't you know, confuse uh, the, the, the project managers with extra tabs of things that you're not, that you're not tracking. Okay. So if we come in under field reports, Eventually, it's going to pop in here. Come on. Yeah, there we go. This takes it a while. It has to go through and build a list if there are any field, active field reports out there already. Okay. So we've got some field reports here um, that uh, we were keeping track of here. Um, so we can open up any of these. Actually, let me build this out here so we can see. Let's see, you can see all that. We can see who was working on it. We see the job number, um, the date. Pull this over. The type. Okay, we're just doing a daily report. Okay. All right. So we can open up any of these and look at them. Uh, if we need to create a new field report, we just click 
click on New. And then we're going to, we have to put our job number in there. Who's preparing it? And we'll say me. Description. Okay. And then the type. Um, this type can be customized, so we're assuming we're doing this daily. That's why it's called daily report. But we can add to this if, if we need to. And then all the tabs that you see here, these are the field reports that were activated in PJ settings. Now, there is one that is that interacts outside of PJ. All the rest of these are information only for reporting. Uh, inquiries and that. But there is also payroll, a payroll time that you can have your project managers um, or, or foreman or whoever has access to this field report. They can actually enter in the employees and their pay ID and their hours. And the cost code for that job. And then actually we have, oh, let me drag this out here. There are some, these are just some custom things we've added. So if we, again, hide show columns, we can take those off. If we don't want to see these things on the end, maybe we don't need to see those. Okay. So again, um, someone who has access to this uh, field report can enter time here. Okay. Now, when you send it to payroll, it's actually going to pull this, these records into the new.prt file. It'll pull in based on uh, the setup. It'll pull the rate of pay and, and do the extension. It'll pull the category off of the regular pay, uh, pay ID. And it's going to mark this box right here that it has actually sent this over to payroll. So let me, let's see if we can do that. Oops, date from payroll time must be earlier than earlier or equal to the period in. Oh. Find this date right here. Come on. I'll pull that out. Okay, let's send it again. Okay. Okay, so it is actually now, see how I've got the check mark and sent to payroll? So they can tell what has been sent and what hasn't been sent. And it's only going to send the, the information that has not been sent over to payroll. Okay. Now that's different than the labor. So here you can record or, or a, a field engineer or a project manager can fill in uh, the employee time, hours worked, again, for reporting purposes. However, this does not interface back to payroll. So the other um, types we have here, again, we've got the weather. I have to manually put this in. Uh, sub subcontractor, if you're recording uh, you know, how many hours, how many people from the subcontractor worked on it. Uh, equipment, you know, what pieces of equipment were out in the field. Materials. This could be from a purchase order. Um, again, what Sage did is they went out um, and talked to several companies about what kinds of things they, that they would need to record within the project management application uh, to track the project with. And this is the, these are the ones that they came up with. Now, other than changing the column headings on these, 
sorry, other than changing the, the columns that show up with hide show columns, you can't add a new field report or add any different types of columns to the field report. If there is something else that you need to track other than what you see here in the field report, close out of here, then what you need to create are custom logs. Now these five custom logs come with the software. So this communications log, um, the correspondence log actually takes the place of that, but this could be other, you know, other types of, of uh, asking for here because I don't you oh upgrade okay um, yeah so these are, are created under under setup and you can pull in the different types of columns that you need with a description and a value whether it's a text or a date or a checkbox or whatever um, and then you you access this through custom logs. So the setup is done over here under setup and you just go through and you create a new one, give it a name and then you have to tell it you know what the heading is, let's say uh, we'll just call it person, uh, what type of column it's going to be, you can use the drop down to, to uh, determine that and then you just go on to the next column. You just use your arrows to go, back, to go back and forth. You can even move the columns around. So if you get something set up out of order, use the move, col move button to move stuff back and forth. Okay. So now, if I close out of here, yes, yes, start. Okay, it's gonna upgrade that again. Now if I come back here, class. Ooh. Custom logs, come on. Well, that's lovely. Set up custom log. Why aren't you under there? Okay, let's close out of here. Maybe it needs to refresh itself. <clears throat> It. Okay, so there it is, and it'll, it'll have the columns in there that you've de that you've defined. Okay. All right. Um, I've also included in your handout some reports that I think could be could be handy. Um, the the job overview and the job summary report and the job cost summary report. And I've, I've actually uh, let you know whether it's a crystal design or a report uh, design. And these are, are not necessarily for documents. They're, uh, they're just reports inside project management that will give you um, information about your project. Okay, so reminders. Set yourself up as a default sender. Uh, make sure that each uh, person who's going to be accessing PJ and sending or emailing out of it sets themselves up as a default sender. Um, if your company is not set up in address book, be sure that you go ahead and get yourself, your company set up and then add yourself as a person within that company. So when the email goes out, not only will it show you, but it'll show you the company that you're with. And then uh, again, the forms can be modified with Crystal. Uh, so any of these forms that we've looked at today that you need to add logos to or add you know, more text to, you have available to you through the Crystal Report Writer uh, to, to make those changes. Okay. So take advantage of some of these forms. They are 
they're they're quite professional looking, and uh, I think the re the person that receives them will will be impressed. Okay, um, we have a few minutes before the end of the hour. Are there any questions, um, Tina? I don't know if you can if you can hear me. Yep, I hear you. I don't I don't see any questions yet. Okay, well let's give them a minute to see if anybody has any any questions. You can also later, if you think of a of a question about this, you can send those questions in to Tina. And she'll forward them to me, and I'll be happy to to answer anything that you that you come up with. Not seeing any questions at this point. Okay. All right. So, um, just a reminder that our third session on project management, which deals with uh, change orders, change requests, will be on September 25th. From uh, at, I'm sorry, at the same time, so 11:30 to 12:30, uh, your time. So um, if I don't hear from you before then, um, I hope to see you in in the class. So thanks very much. <laughs>